Ukraine has information regarding the preparation of two units of North Korean soldiers, specifically two brigades, stated Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sighed in his nightly address. We have information about the preparation of two units of military personnel from North Korea, potentially even two brigades of 6,000 people each. And this is a challenge. But we know how to respond to this challenge. It's important that our partners do not shy away from this challenge as well. All partners, Zelensky said. He also expressed gratitude to Ukraine's partners who condemned North Korea's involvement in the Russian war. It's clear that in Pyongyang, just like in Moscow, they do not count people and do not value human lives. But we all around the world are equally interested in ending the war, not prolonging it. That is why we must stop Russia and its accomplices together," the president stated. He noted that if North Korea can interfere in the war in Europe, it indicates that there is not enough pressure on this regime. If Russia can still make this war bigger and longer, then everyone in the world who is not helping to force Russia to peace is actually helping Putin to fight. Criminals must be stopped. We expect a strong, substantive reaction from the world. Preferably, not just in words, Zelensky emphasized. Zelensky reacted to the resignation of the country's prosecutor general amid allegations of fake disabilities scam. National Security and Defense Council discussed the situation in Ukraine's prosecution bodies. As a result of this discussion, the prosecutor general of Ukraine, Andriy Kostin, submitted a letter of resignation, Zelensky said in his nightly address. Recently, Kostin publicly resigned days after initiating in-house corruption investigations of his own agency. A statement published by General Prosecutor's Office said the decision to resign came hours after Zelensky held a Security Council meeting to discuss fake disability certificates of officials of state bodies. I consider the position of the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, to be absolutely correct regarding the need not only to annul all unlawful decisions concerning the granting of disabilities, relevant pension payments, and other benefits, but also to implement clear legislative and organizational changes, as well as personal responsibility. This includes political responsibility, Kostin wrote in the resignation statement. The scandal regarding fake disability certificates began last week after Ukrainian journalists claimed nearly 50 prosecutors of western Khmelnytsky region of Ukraine had faked disabilities which enabled them to receive social security benefits. Доповідей Головкома Сирського по ситуації на нашому фронті і по перспективах на найближчий час. Зокрема, ми маємо інформацію про підготовку двох підрозділів числа військових з Північної Кореї. Може бути навіть дві бригади по 6 тисяч людей. І це, і це виклик. І якщо Північна Корея може втручатися у війну в Європі, значить тиску на цей режим точно не достатньо. І якщо Росія досі може робити цю війну більшою і довшою, значить кожен у світі, хто досі не допомагає примушувати Росію до миру, насправді допомагає Путіну воювати. People laid flowers beside the Moscow grave of former Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny on Tuesday, the day his memoir was posthumously released. Navalny's widow, Yulia Navalnaya, called the book a testament to his resilience, courage, and faith in a better future for our country. This book reflects his fortitude and sense of humor, which did not leave him even in the most terrible prison conditions, said Navalnyaya in a video posted on her Instagram a week ago. The memoir documents the famed dissident's extraordinary battle against despair as Russian authorities gradually increase their crackdown against him, and even shares advice on how to confront the worst and still not lose hope. In recent years, Navalny had become an international symbol of resistance. A lawyer by training, he started out as an anti-corruption campaigner, but soon turned into a politician with aspirations for public office and eventually became the main challenger to Russia's longtime president, Vladimir Putin. 
He was jailed after returning in 2021 from Germany where he was recuperating from a nerve agent poisoning, which he blamed on the Kremlin and was given three prison terms since. In December 2023, the authorities transferred Navalny to a penal colony of the highest security level in the Russian penitentiary system in a remote town above the Arctic Circle. In February 2024, 47-year-old Navalny suddenly died there. The circumstances and cause of his death remain a mystery. Navalny's widow and his allies say the Kremlin killed him, while the authorities claim Navalny died of natural causes. Алексей начал писать ее, когда восстанавливался после отравления и продолжил уже в тюрьме. В нее он делится своими надеждами и огромной любовью к России. Для меня это не просто книга, а последнее послание моего мужа, свидетельство его стойкости, храбрости и веры в лучшее будущее для нашей страны. Эта книга отражает его силу духа и чувство юмора, которые не покидали его даже в самых страшных условиях тюрьмы. Алексей никогда не сдавался, и это то, что я хочу, чтобы люди помнили о нем. Он боролся не ради власти или личной выгоды, а ради справедливости и свободы для всех нас. Потеря Алексея величайшая боль в моей жизни. Но я знаю, что его история продолжит вдохновлять людей. Я надеюсь, что, прочитав «Патриот», вы проникнетесь его убеждениями и его верой в то, что правда и добро победят.